I don't know what's happening anymore. Well, I am me, again. That's, that's always good. Chloe, you're back. Oh yeah, now you suddenly want to kiss me? You had your chance. I'm just, I'm just, I'm so glad you're here. You sound high, but thanks for the morning grope. Since we were up all night playing CSI Arcadia Bay, I was still spaced out here trying to put all this info together. Info for what? I still don't Max, know what's did going you on. Forget we've gone over this. I hope you weren't messing around with time while I was sleeping. Not anymore. I'm just spaced out too. Welcome back to the real world, Max. Just give me a moment. Just give me a moment, guys. I don't think I can ever tell Chloe about what happened. You kind of already did with your whole crying when you were kids and telling her no matter what happens I'm so sorry I'll always be here for you when she would how do you not question that as Chloe how again does your dad die and you not think what did you do you know because that was completely out of character for Max and it, it was completely out of the blue they were just having a normal morning conversation and everything you know, with breakfast and just family again to let you know any Oh, my God. It's one of those things where, like, everyone talks about how realistic this game is, but then it just goes to these weird extremes and everything, and it's like that. No. I don't think that they would just be like that. I mean, and the way they talked about time, the way they talked in general, it seems like they're just as good friends as before. Okay, so I am definitely going to read that wall because I'm sure we'll answer questions, but just right now, I wanted to give you my initial reactions and thoughts and stuff, so. Let's look weird. at the big board and see all our pieces in the puzzle so far. Is this the same? Is this the Rachel and puzzle? The shit. What puzzle? Like, what puzzle are we talking about? It is just Rachel Amber. So close, yet so far away. We have to do three main things. Right. Um, what things? One, decipher Frank's logbook. Two, get Nathan's phone to find out where he's been during the Vortex Club parties with Kate and Rachel. And see whatever hidden shit he's got in his messages. Three, beat Step Douche Dan until he tells us about Frank, Nathan, and the Dark Room. And I do have a gun now. Keep it in your pants. We'll have to do this on our own. Dude, at least let me kick his ass, then rewind. <laughs> Fine, whatevs. It's your power. Which I can't waste on shit like that. Or Blackwell would be in big trouble. You didn't even let me take that money to pay Frank off. And I'm glad. We have to be better than that. I know. You should get busy in the garage to see what dirt you can dig up. I'm gonna cyberstalk some names and see where that leads. Or to who. And be careful of Stepcrack. Unless you want to hang out with him after you stood up for his ass yesterday. Oh, please. Man, this game better. I can't abuse this level of my rewind power. This game better touch on some big it's things. It's way too dangerous, and I need to navigate the present without messing Otherwise, with the Otherwise, it's just past. I'm gonna have complaints. All right. Want to look at this more clearly? Amazing how clearly. innocent our drawings were. Or can I not actually go in? Compared to what we're doing now. All right. That's my Chloe. Um, what about stuff here? Like I said, I don't want to sit on the bed. Damn. Just because I got up for a serious you know? expose on the Prescotts. Finally. Okay, the Great Northwest, the Prescotts, Pan Estates, Heaven or Hell by Craig Kennedy. Pan Estates. I don't know if that's the term. I assume it is. The name Prescott may not mean much to you or to those outside the edges of a small coastal Oregon town, but this is a name that means quite a bit in Arcadia Bay, a quaint town seemingly stuck in time. Once home to a prosperous fishing and tourism industry, the town has seen much better paydays, despite the local success of the prestigious Blackwell Academy and its football and swimming teams. The Bigfoots and the Otters. Sorry. Environmental changes to the area have reduced the amount of fish and other sea life, resulting in a stagnant, stagnant economy and limited tourism. Oddly, the Prescotts have managed to keep their business interests quite profitable. In fact, they're behind an expensive, exclusive housing development known as Pan Estates, okay, gotcha, to be built into the deep forest near Blackwell Academy. 
Local Native American groups have already filed various motions against the development, citing widespread destruction of tribal lands and natural resources. Continued on next page. Which I... which is torn. Okay. Even Holmes and Watson didn't use every piece of information. Yeah, but you should still, like, keep it in mind, I guess. Staying up all night is the best excuse to drink lots of coffee. I wish I could tell Chloe how much William cared about her. No one ever remarks when I take a photo of them. Yes, Chloe Price was here. Um, anything else I want to look at? I'm so sorry, William. It's not fair you had to die twice. He, he only experienced it once, so that's okay. This butterfly photo seems like a million years ago. How much time have I altered since? Um, anything else? That snow dough I don't know always makes how me much think is of new. William and Chloe. You know? I, feel like we're missing I still feel thing. sketchy about giving Chloe the gun back. It is better than Frank having it, I think, you know? I guess I don't need to go there. I could go see if anyone's in here. No, I guess Since not. Since David might be in there, I better mosey along for a change. Fair enough. Even though you could just go in if he's not there, rewind. But I guess you didn't want to waste your power. I mean, she's been actually saying that. So, yeah. Ooh, TV. Those poor whales are like beached angels. Or what beached whales, at least. Here? <gasps> Warren! Wait. Hold on. They're still going. It seems like I've missed a lot of text. Do you... That sound! Do I have to go to the bottom to make it stop? Oh, wait, hold on. Dad. Um, but da ba da ba da ba da Hold on. Okay, so let's see. I think it starts here, the new stuff. Hey, honey, I just got a weird text warning me that my nosy daughter better stop watching others and look out for herself. Is this some kind of school prank? And it's from a blog number. Oh, I'm so sorry. So, no, no, And my class thought that thought that would be funny to send. It's not. I don't like strangers having my number, okay? Me neither. Sorry. I'm just being a dad. I know this has been a tough week for you. It's almost over. I'll call you guys later. Love you. And mama. It's okay. These are all. Except Warren. I'll have to remember to check Warren's. So mom. Um. Okay, it starts here. Maxine, what the heck is going on with the weather up there? Are they doing military tests or something? You're right in the eye of the storm. No comment. I've kept Lisa alive through all this, so we're still safe. As long as you're around. Now back to the books. Talk soon. Exo Maxo. Oh, okay. Gotcha. First I thought it was Exo Ma, because mom, Exo, but Maxo. Gotcha. Kate. Do, 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 do. Where? Um. I'm pretty sure, but just in case. Max, thank you for my heart for reaching out to me on the roof. You're the only one who was there for me at school, the only one who truly cared. I have to believe that you were sent to give me hope. You did so much more than that. My father's grateful as well. You'll always be in our prayers, love and blessings, your friend Kate. So sad that she only says my father is grateful, not my family, you know. Hey, Kate, I'm so glad you're okay. I'll visit you as soon as I can, promise. So I'm pretty sure I read those two, but now we're refreshed. Max, how are you? I hope you can still visit me this week. I have some important things to talk about. Oh, that'll be cool. Assuming we actually play through it. Of course I'm still coming to visit you. You can't stop me. I miss you and my bunny. We all miss you, little nosh monster. And your bunny misses you. Yay, you are such a great friend. Thank you so much. Can't wait to see you, XO Maxo. Justin. Not used to talking to him. Uh, oh, okay. Sorry, my phone was in my bag. Hey, Justin, you busy? Max Wax, I'm busy blazing. What up? Do you know Frank Bowers? Drugs. That's it? Ask Nathan. He knows him, I think. Okay, Mona, thanks, Justin. For what? <laughs> Juliet. Mm. Hey, Max, I hope you're okay after everything. You might be busy, but feel free to call me anytime. Hey, Juliet, are you busy? No time to be busy. You never text me what's going down. Besides everything, I was just curious if you ever heard of a guy named Frank who lives in an RV around town. I don't remember any of this stuff when we did the RV parts. And usually I notice, I think, when, like, a new text pops up. So that's weird. 
Anyway. You meet a van down by the river. I heard he's a sketchy meth head. That's about it. Why are you going doing your own investigation without my help? No, just bored. Talk soon. Thanks. Okay, but you can't keep secrets from Ace Reporter Juliet Watson. Hello? People are so impatient. I mean, because they always ask, like, hello? Why aren't you texting me? And it's like, ten minutes past. Calm down. Okay, um... Do, do, do. What? Hey man, I suck again. Sorry I got in your face today and took out my BS rage on my best friend. Okay, that's nice. Clearly I understand you're going through a lot. We all are. Besides, I threw your beanie out the window and busted out my rewind. <laughs> Wink face. Okay, that is your one get out of emoji jail free card. But we need to stock up on cigs, coffee, and candy for an all-nighter. We have to get into Rachel and Kate detective mode. Cool. Excellent, dear Watson. I'll bring my thinking cap. No worries. I have a beanie. I'll swing by and pick you up. Sweet. I'll be ready. XOXO. And that was no emoji. Um, okay. Back to Warren. That's the last text we need here. Hey, and then actually after this, I might be able to, um, to check the journal. Maybe now it'll have updated a minute. No, a minute. Wow. An hour and 11 minutes into this recording session. Okay. Um, um, um. Okay, and someone pointed this out when Warren says, I managed to get us both tickets, but I'm pretty sure, yeah, what someone pointed out was that they're going to a drive through where it's one per car, like you just have to pay for one car admission. So he didn't need two tickets, he just needed that one. Anyway, so I don't know how literal he's being, but yeah. Um, thanks for helping with my experiment, Dr. Max Stein. I didn't help at all. You did enough so that I got an A- instead of a B+, plus. I was stressed about. Okay, I'll take credit for your success. Congrats, I rule. Even though A- is such a BS grade. A-? minus. Somehow I think you'll survive. Tell that to my folks. Got a jam. Bathroom. Thanks for sharing. <laughs> yo, yo, Max. Your friend Chloe told me that you shot her down. True? Chloe actually texted you? I sure didn't have her number. Oh, gosh. I don't want to embarrass you. Too late. She sounds cool. She's a cool dork like me. No, you're different in a good way. So we're still on to go, ape? <laughs> <laughs> no darn dirty human can stop me. Go ape, not human. We shall see. I hope so. Now I have to get back to reality. That sucks. Indeed, I'll buzz you later. Okay, that actually was good because usually, yeah, it seems like they've they pushed Warren relationship-wise down so far. But I liked the, you know, like dorky in a good way or whatever, you know, kind of thing. Whatever that comment was, it was nice. Um, I don't know if I had Frank before, so I'll check him. Let's see. I'll never forget Frank, if only because he's the first and last person I will ever aim a gun at. How did Chloe end up with a sketchy drug dealer's orbit? The weird thing is that when I was first, when I first saw him threatening Chloe in the junkyard, I was more shocked how uncreepy he looked. Oh no, we did read this part. Never mind then. So let's just go straight to the journals. Okay, we have a star on Wednesday and a star on Thursday. All right. So this is the point where this is going to be, I think, its own episode. It depends on how long it takes to read, but um, I do apologize in advance for those of you who do not like these reading episodes, but that's what this is going to be. So let me take a drink and then we'll begin. I really need more water than that. Let's do this. So, the first thing we had to do was get Frank's scary dog out of the RV, so we did the classic cartoon give a dog a bone routine and Cujo became Scooby-Doo just like that. Frank's RV was pretty much what I expected. Drug dealer, trash... Chic. Okay. But it wasn't a serial killer, as I feared. We ransacked the place and found what Chloe didn't want us to find. I'm sorry Chloe had to see the pictures of Rachel posing for Frank, even if she did care about him. To her, it's just another betrayal, just another loved one dumping on her. Everybody she ever loved, she lost one way or another. Only I came back from the past. For what? To make Chloe's life more painful? I just wish I could use my rewind power to go all the way back to the days when we were covered in pancake flour. Life was simple. What's that? Oh, I was like, what's the the blue sketchy triangle? It's probably if you're using a mouse to control. It's a cursor, is what I'm saying. I found Chloe's gun, or should I say David's gun, and reluctantly gave it back to her. I honestly don't feel that she's any safer with it, especially considering how stupid she acts with it. But I definitely don't want Frank coming after Chloe with her own weapon. Yeah, that's what I was more concerned about. October 10th. Dear Diary. Let's never do the time warp again. I can't even begin to explain what happened if I think too hard about the ramifications. Or, what happened, period. I missed a period. If I think too hard about the ramifications, my brain might melt. When I try to describe it, it's as if I'm describing something that happened to someone else. Chloe was so upset when we discovered that Rachel had actually been involved with Frank Bowers, and she just blew up. I can never talk to her when she's like this, and I just get so tired of having to walk on eggshells around her emotions. She still blames William for her messed up life, no matter how much she knows she's being unfair. 
I can't say that I wouldn't be just as messed up, not that I'm not in my own way. In my room, all I could think was I wish I could go back in time and help Chloe, and suddenly I was looking at the photograph William had taken of us on the day he died, and it started pulsing like it was 3D, like I could see inside the photograph. Then I told myself actually, or then I found myself actually back in the photo, to when I was 13 years old. I was back in Chloe's kitchen in the year 2008. With Chloe and William. Right before he left to pick up Joyce for the last time. Since my power somehow morphed to this new level of rewind, I decided that there was no way I was going to let William die again. So I played hide, and hide the keys until we had no other option but to take the bus. Or until he had no other option. I was so happy I actually saved William, I never thought about what could go wrong. I knew I was screwed when I came out of my epic rewind and saw Victoria chase. But now she was my friend, and I was a member of the Vortex Club. Enough said. I knew I had screwed up, and then I felt sick thinking about what might have changed with Chloe. I had a clue when I saw David Matson driving the school bus. He sure didn't look so threatening anymore. I didn't want to know how he ended up as a bus driver instead of with Joyce. I felt my heart drop when I rushed to Chloe's house. So when William opened the door, I prepared myself for the worst. That's when Chloe rolled forward in her wheelchair, paralyzed from the neck down. I didn't even know what to say, so I covered my mouth with my typical gesture of shock and stupid. But Chloe's smile was so genuine and beautiful, I almost cried. I had to adjust to everything without freaking out or telling Chloe that I accident actually altered time and space to save her father, but get her in a car accident so she can never walk again. The thing is, she was still Chloe, just minus all the rage. This Chloe was just grateful to be alive and have her family watching over her. Chloe begs me to spend the night, and of course, I did. I noticed how run down parts of their home were compared to before. I saw the incredible expensive equipment that Chloe now requires, including her new garage room. Sorry, David. Even though I felt awful and disconnected, Chloe was just so bubbly and excited to hang out with me again, especially since I flaked on her pretty hardcore after her accident. Even in an alternate universe, I'm a crappy friend. Chloe's world was so new and unique to me, especially her strength and kindness. And pain. She needed a whole pharmacy to get her through the day. I didn't feel sorry for her. I felt in awe with her attitude. This Chloe didn't blame anybody for her condition, even though she had the right. We strolled down the beach and saw the beached whales that proved something bad was happening in both realities. I feel like that chunk should go before the whole spend the night thing. But I guess maybe, begged to spend the night, they went to the beach, and then went back home. And then Chloe asked me to put her to sleep. The accident left her body pretty much broken. Her legs stopped wor yeah, her lungs, sorry, stopped working properly, and she was basically dying a slow, painful death. She also felt so guilty about her parents' sacrifice and dwindling income. She wasn't erratic or tortured about this request, just practical. Which made me feel even more terrible for putting her in this situation. But there was no way I was going to help my best friend take her own life. I couldn't do it, especially after what happened with Kate. I know I should have done whatever Chloe asked of me, considering I was responsible for her situation, but how could I inject her full of morphine and just watch her fade away? I know she was upset but I just had to tell myself that this reality wasn't real. After my visit to Chloe's new world, I knew it was time to go max to the future. Back to the future, I get it. I had seen the result of my temporal tampering and I got scared thinking my new power wouldn't even work anymore. That would have been cruel karma. Fortunately, I was able to project myself into the photograph once again and I undid everything I had done. Goodbye, William, again. Hello, David, again. I've never been so glad to see Chloe in my life. The second I saw her blue hair and that beautiful pissed off face, I kind of regretted not kissing her when she double dared me. Even though I did. Maybe if she had double- or maybe she had double dog dared me. And I couldn't even tell her where I had been, or why it would be one more thing to alienate Chloe from me in the world. I had to get refocused on our search for Rachel. Chloe had been busy with her detective work while I was in my alternate timeline. And I think that's the end of the journal stuff. Yeah. Okay, Wednesday and Thursday, despite having two days in all the stuff that happened, was actually pretty short. So, not a full episode. No, that was like not even ten whole minutes, that segment. Cool. Let's be pensive again. Somehow, I existed in this whole other reality. But I, I don't know what happened. The more I use my power, the more I see how little control I have over what happens. Now Max Caulfield 
exists in two or maybe three different realities. How can I have a destiny? Mm, no, no, you're talking about really theoretic, me for theoretical stuff. Alive. But I couldn't do it. Thinking about all these lifelines almost makes my head hurt worse than the rewind. Okay, I think we're done here. Cool, let's get up. I mean, the alternate timelines thing, actually having a max exist in multiple that she created, is a totally plausible thing. It's just not necessarily. I think this what all it started be. with my vision of a tornado. And that's just what, you know, whatever media decides. So, like, if this game decides that's how time travel works, like, that's fine as long as they stay consistent with it, you know? It's the consistency that matters. Arcadia Bay Beacon, Eco Apocalypse Now? While Arcadia Bay was until now considered a quaint fishing and tourist nook in the or on the Oregon coast, the town that time forgot is, since the beginning of this week, in the literal eye of an environmental storm. Starting with a freak snowfall, an unprecedented eclipse, dying birds, and now a half dozen beached whales, Arcadia Bay's strange weather is being studied by prominent state and national scientists, apparently including NASA. What's even more incredible that the, than these eco-phenomena is the fact that not a single meteorologist has offered any actual theory or even reason for this atmospheric havoc. Continued on next page, but we cannot continue. Is there anything else worth checking out? That's where I burned the photo. We can look at this. Joyce really wants David and Chloe to be a family. I accept your offer of dinner and a movie. Maybe Chloe would like to come along. I'll call you later. XXX, oh, 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 Joyce. Mm. I'm like, should I go into the garage? Yep, locked from the other side. <laughs> What's this one? The most expensive restaurant in town? Oh. David knows how to get on Joyce's good side. So, Rue Altamore, French Italian cuisine. Okay, six course couples dinner with endless wine. Oh, $260. That's money. I don't have that. Hey, what's up, homeboy? May I'm a max. Looks like David finished his car repairs. Maybe there's some new clues around. Do you want to chat about life and stuff? Anything I can do for you, Max? I... I was just waiting for Chloe to get out of the bathroom so we can go. You sound so you panicked. Want. So I'll pretend what you just said is true, Missy. Excuse me. That's Miss Caulfield. Yes, sir. You and Chloe still better be careful where you wander. There are a lot of dark places in Arcadia Bay. What do you mean by dark places? I can't tell you everything that's going on at Blackwell. And you've seen too much already, so please stay out of this, Max. Too late. I already know way too much. So, do you and Nathan Prescott... That little shit-ass Nathan Prescott is lucky he only got suspended. I don't think luck had anything to do with it. I could have been suspended, too. I didn't have all the evidence at the time. I... I am sorry, Max. Anyway, I think we can both agree it's been a hard week on all of us. It has. Especially poor Kate Marsh. I tried to help Kate. You did, Max. You saved her life like a hero while I left the goddamn dorm roof wide open. I knew Kate was feeling desperate. You even made it to the roof before me or anybody. I knew Kate was desperate, too. So did Mr. Jefferson. That guy is an elitist prick. And I'm off duty, so I can say it at home behind his back. <laughs> like when Chloe calls me step douche. These artists live in a fantasy world. Why do you say that? These art farts are all about themselves. When I was in the service, I hated the photographers who tried to pose me in their anti-war bullshit. Well, Blackwell Academy is a school for artists, so maybe this isn't the best place for you. I have a family here, Max, and I think Blackwell is the best place for me, since only I know what's happening. Of course, thanks to Mrs. Grant and her hippie anti-surveillance petition, I hope everybody feels safer, like Rachel Amber and Kate Marsh. Although, you're like a walking surveillance system. I appreciate you standing up for me. 
But I have to be a hard ass and tell you and Chloe to stay the hell out of this. Things are just gonna get more ugly. Chloe and I can take care of ourselves. Now excuse me, Max. I have to get back to my camera. See? I'm an artist too. Oh. To be fair, I think Max was a lot more of a dick there than David was. I don't totally trust David, hey, but he's not a real step fear. Well, that's the thing. Like, it was all you Maybe and how you approached it. You turned that into a negative thing. Should I have signed the petition? Blackwell sure isn't safe and private anymore. So let's see, from Raymond West to David Manson. Despite a rather heated discussion about the successful petition to block a campus surveillance system, I am still interested in your feedback on other met methods of improving Blackwell security. We must find a middle ground between safety and privacy for our students. I think middle ground David is good, yeah. David really did protect Chloe. I'm glad I stuck up for him. So, from David Madsen to Officer Barry. Howdy, Andy. Just wanted to let you know that Chloe was actually with me the other night and not at Blackwell. I almost wish she had been because I caught her with more weed, so I had to put the fear of God and country into her. Not to mention the threat of kicking your butt out of the house. These kids are so gosh darn entitled, as you know. Just wanted to let you know so Chloe's mother doesn't think her daughter was breaking into her old alma mater. Chloe's allergic to school now. Thanks, and let's get together for a two wheels breakfast, my treat. So, yeah, he did lie for her. I'm not sure why exactly, but yeah. Surveillance cameras at Pan Estates? David must be working for the Prescotts, too. I guess I could talk to him again. Sorry, Max. I can't if talk I rewind. and work. Oh, that makes me sad. It was so incredible to see William so again. So I guess after I look around, I'll rewind and talk Chloe to him once more. What the hell did David do for Nathan? And what did his dad do for David? I don't know, but David doesn't like them, that's for sure. I wonder if David is going to the party. Or at least doesn't like Nathan, but I assume it would be kind of everyone involved. Whoa, that is a serious padlock on that locker. Hey David, what you hiding? Who knows? One, 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 one. Shit. Wasn't that. One, 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 two. One, 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 three. For once, I don't have time to search for the code. I need to find a key. Hmm. Where would I find a key? Oh, look, I found Max, the keys. I don't like people in my personal space. I mean it. That's fine. I'm just Excuse gonna me, Max. take these. Do not touch one goddamn thing. Okay. Come on, Max. Find a way to get David this out of this cave. Man cave. So, no girls allowed. Um, let's just rewind really quick. Wait, was that talking or was that trying to take the keys? Well, it doesn't let me talk to him again, so... All the way back before their conversation. I figure after this we can go and try to find a way to get him out of the garage real quick. And then we can check the locker. Hey, bud. No, apparently that wasn't enough still. Why can't I talk to you? Yeah, hurry up. Just go. Why else? Why is it making me go this far back? It's not letting me talk to him. Why the bloody bollocks is it not letting me talk to him? That is annoying. I mean, again, how much- crap, I didn't mean to do that. No, go through the stupid... Is it really... Oh my gosh! Excuse me, Max. Excuse me. Come on, Max. Find a way to get David out of this cave.
But look at that. I literally cannot rewind anymore. Excuse me. I don't get it. Come on, Max. Find a way to get David out of his cave. This game is dumb. Hey, hey, you learned something new for a conversation. Oh, sorry, you can't talk to him anymore even though you rewind as freaking far back as bloody possible. David will not leave if I ask him nicely, so... I need to create a major distraction. I can't let David see me while I snag his keys. Enter the ninja. Son of a bitch! I just fixed that fuse box. I give up William, but defend David? Gotcha. Hey, okay, now I can speak to you. Anything I can do for you, Max? I... I think by dark... I can't tell you. Too late. I already know way too much. I can skip like this one? Like the fact that you might okay. be working for Sean Prescott. What? Who told you that? Nathan Prescott? That little shit ass is lucky he only got suspended. I don't think luck had anything to do with it. I didn't have all the evidence at the... So, are you gonna tell me why you think I'm working for Sean Prescott? I saw documents that you were hired to do surveillance and security at Pan Estates. God damn. You are a good detective. But I didn't get hired. I gave Sean Prescott an estimate. For my own reasons. Anyway, I think we can both agree it's been a hard That's all? I tried. You did. You even made it. I knew Kate would. That guy? Why do you. That seems He's dumb. Done. Well. I have a fan. So all we know course, is that he didn't get hired. Although, he just gave estimates. Chloe and I. Now, excuse me. It's okay. That was worth it. Oh, wait, no, I don't want that. I want to use keys. Go back. And keys. I am the key master. And he just doesn't hear any of that. <laughs> Oh, maps, notes, coordinates, photos of Kate, Nathan. Oh, yes. That is an up close shot, or he has like really a good camera, you know. Wow. Oh, hey, he was there for that. So he sees that Nathan's a bully. And there's and there's me. Just gonna put that in my pocket. Score. I guess that's my bag, but back to Chloe. Didn't now. look like she was quite reaching that far. Oh man, look at that! Nothing was ever tampered with. Fulman could just like put his keys back, but <laughs> actually. Can I put his keys back? I don't want to just keep them. And I don't think it really will matter that he knows we know about the black... I mean, I guess maybe. Ugh, whatever. I, I went back again as far as I could. Can't give the keys back. I don't think it really matters that much that, um... I give up William, but defend David. Calling Chloe? Would Chloe hate me if she knew? Yo, Chloe! Are you ready yet? I have to get back to my dorm. Are we happy? Very happy. I hit the secret file jackpot. It's Kate, Nathan, and Rachel. Plus, there's some location coordinates. David is like a one-man surveillance army. They can't talk about that right Let's outside get the front the door. Hell out of here before we get busted. But I absolutely have to go see Kate in the hospital right now. I want to find out how she's doing. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I was sore. Ooh, 
let's go see Kate. Cue outro, go!